guys, welcome to Roberts and Origin. Today we have we want to have a brief description about the prokaryotic cells. The prokaryotic cells, based on the terminology, composed of three main parts. Pro means before, karyo means nucleus, and ik means belongs to. So they don't have any sort of real nucleus. Instead of that, they have a, re a structure called as nucleoid area. OID means similar to. So this structure don't have any real nucleus. In contrast, they have a specific structure which contains the main heredity material or the main DNA of the cell, which is called as nucleoid area. Okay? The prokaryotic cells are very small and are very simple, appeared in our planet approximately 3.8 billion years ago. And there are two types of them, archaea and eubacteria. The archaeobacteria are not described in this video, but they are able to live in very hard situations, for example, extremely hot and high temperature water, for example, near the volcanic lakes, or for example, inside the environments which have extremely high salt. But in contrast, the eubacterial cells are those ones which are which we are familiar with them, and you means true and real. Okay, so they are real bacterial cells, and most types of the bacterial cells which we are familiar with them located in this category. Based on the structure of the prokaryotic cell, the outer layer is called as capsule. Capsule is a sticky and thick structure inside the upper and outer layer of the prokaryotic cell, which is responsible for protection. And also, by presence of capsule, the prokaryotic cells are able to escape from the immune system of our body, so they play an important role in pathogenesis of the prokaryotic cells. Capsule composed of uh, two main types of macromolecules. Some capsules composed of proteins, and some of them polysaccharides, and some of them both of them. In some cases, the capsule is not well organized. In this situation, it is called as slime layer. So, slime layer is loosened and is not well organized organized compared to the capsule. The other layer that we want to think about it is the cell wall. Okay, Cell wall is a structure which locate uh, in um, some prokaryotic cells but not all of them and based on a sort of technique called as gram staining which is the last name of the discoverer of this technique the prokaryotic cell divide into two types gram positive and gram negative. Okay, Based on the presence of different types of cell wall. We don't want to discuss about them in details, but briefly, the gram-positive bacterial cells contain thick glycan layer, and they're able to absorb crystal violet purple color or dye. That is why the seems purple. Okay, so they have thick glycan layer and the seems purple under the microscope. In contrast, gram-negative bacterial cells contain thin peptidoglycan layer and also an outer membrane on the top of the pe thin peptidoglycan layer which contain a structure called as lipopolysaccharide or LPS. LPS is a structure which we call them as pyrogen. What is the meaning of pyrogen? Fever inducing. Okay, so when gram-negative bacterial cells enter into our body, our body attack to them and make a response which is called as fever. And the cause of fever is LPS. Okay, the other difference between the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells is the size of ribosomes. Ribosomes are the organelles. Uh, in some cases, we don't call them as organelles. Okay, but in some cases, we call them as non membranous organelles. We will discuss about the organelles in the next uh, slides. Okay? Ribosomes are composed of two subunits, small and large subunit, and each subunit composed of a specialized form of RNA called as rRNA and also proteins. The size of ribosomes and the molecular weight of them can be described by a sort of index called as Svedberg or S, based on the centrifugation process that is not described in here. This small subunit is 30S and the large subunit is 50S. So, 
uh, as you can see here, we expect that when they join together, they make a structure called as ADS, but it's not true because small and large subunits are get separate from each other, and only during the translation they join together and make a structure called as 70S, since some part of them being loose for when they join together. In contrast, the eukaryotic cells have two subunits. 40s and 60s and when they join together by the similar method they make a structure called as ADS. As you can see here the small subunit and large subunit and totally the weight of the ribosome in prokaryotic cells is smaller than eukaryotic cells. Okay. The other structure is called as pili. Pili is a structure on the outer surface of the prokaryotic cells in some of them which is responsible for attachment to the surfaces and it's composed of peeling proteins. Okay, it, and there are very short and thick appendages on the surface of the prokaryotic cells, and in some cases they are very thicker and larger, longer, which found between two prokaryotic cells. This structure is called as sex pillars, as making a mating bridge between two prokaryotic cells, which are responsible for exchanging heredity material between them whether plasmid or main DNA between them, okay? The bacterial cell that contain the plasmid is called as F positive and the other one is called as F negative. So they are able to exchange plasmid or a part of DNA from F positive to F negative during the sex pillars and this process is called as conjugation, okay? But mm, pil besides pili, there are, there are some other structure called as fimbria on the upper surface of the prokaryotic cells and they play an important role in the pathogenesis of the prokaryotic cells and they are th thinner and longer compared to the pili. As we mentioned previously, the prokaryotic cells don't have any sort of membranous organelle or some expression which is called as internal compartmentalization and it is the most difference between the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Membranous organelles were described in here and it's a specific structure and components which only found in eukaryotic cells but not prokaryotic cells. And that is why, as you know, each uh, membranous organelle is able to do a specific function. For example, endoplasmic reticulums, rough endoplasmic reticulums for making proteins or etc. Okay? And they are able to do tasks inside the cell simultaneously. And uh, as you know, prokaryotic cells don't have them. That is why they, re they remain very simple and smaller because they are not able to do tasks simultaneously in contrast to the, to the eukaryotic cells which contain these organelles. The other main feature of the prokaryotic cells are the main DNA of them, which locate in the nucleoid area. Okay, the circular DNA, which has two strands located in the prokaryotic cells inside the nucleoid area, OID, as we mentioned, it's called as similar, so they don't have real nucleus. In contrast, they have an area which is called as, which is similar to the nucleus, okay, and we call that as nucleoid area, which has the main DNA, but in some cases, the Prokaryotic cells contain other form of DNA called as plasmid that replicate independently from the main DNA and uh, contain, uh, for example, some genes which are not able to be found in the main DNA, for example, antibiotic resistance genes and this form of DNA or a segment of them, as we mentioned previously, can be exchanged during the conjugation process. The other thing and the other feature of the prokaryotic cells is a flagella. Okay, flagella or flagellum in singular form is an organelle which is responsible for chemotaxis process. Okay, so as you can see here in this figure, the flagella has some appendage and structures which can be located in different areas of the prokaryotic cells. Some structures and some rings only found in the cytoplasm, some rings of them found in the peptidic glycan layer, and some rings found in the outer membrane. That is why, okay, the outer membrane, as we know, only found in gram negative bacterial cells. And gram L ring, which found in the outer membrane, only found in gram negative bacterial cells. 
What is chemotaxis? Movement toward towards food supplies or stay away from the toxins and drugs and etc. is called as chemotaxis. Chemical movement. Okay. Movement towards food supplies or stay away from toxins and drugs. Okay, and the arrangement of the flagella in different types of prokaryotic cells are different from each other. For example, if there would be only one flagella and one pole of the prokaryotic cells, it is called as monotrichus. If more than one flagella found in one pole of the prokaryotic cells, it is called as lophotrichus. Amphi means by in the third figure, okay? Amphi means by or two. So when two or more flagella found in prokaryotic cells and look at in both poles of them, which is called as amphitrichus. And peri means environment. When the flagella extend all over the prokaryotic cells, uh, air surface area, it is called as peritrichus. Okay, guys, this was a brief description about the features of the prokaryotic cells and their structure. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope we see you in Hubert very soon. Thank you for your attention.